So today's title is called Gospel Conversation. And here is the objective. The objective is this. Believers are called to have gospel conversations. Believers are called to have gospel conversations. For a fact, the mission of our church is what? To equip our families, friends, and communities with the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's why we come to church. We're called, we come to church to be equipped with the gospel so that when we go home, we can have gospel conversations in our homes, in our workplace, or when you're out hanging out with your friends or your co-workers. Okay? Gospel conversations. We're called to have gospel conversation. And you're probably wondering, what is the gospel conversation? What is gospel conversation, Pastor? This is what gospel conversation is. For those who are curious about what is gospel conversation. Gospel conversation is this. We as believers communicating the good news. So the communication of good news. That's what the gospel conversation is. It's through our conversation. When we converse with one another. When we talk to one another. It's the dialogue of us speaking about who God is. That is what gospel conversations. Okay? Saying, so, okay, now we know what is gospel conversations. Probably wonder why do we practice gospel conversations? Here's the reason why we practice gospel conversations. Why, Pastor? Well, here's the reason why. Because salvation is only through hearing. The word of God. Salvation is only comes through hearing the gospel. The word hearing the gospel. In Romans 10 and 17 says what? So faith comes from what? So faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of Jesus Christ. That is why we have gospel conversations. People are not saved because of your testimonies. People are not saved because of your actions, okay? People are not saved by coming to church. People are not saved by being baptized. People are not saved, you know, because your mom and dad are Christians. People are saved by what? Hearing the gospel. Hearing the word of Jesus Christ. And what is the word of Jesus Christ? The Holy Bible. Amen. That is why as a church we are called to have gospel conversations. We, don't, we aren't saved because we sing songs, praise and worship songs. Okay? We are saved through the word. Of Jesus Christ. And the Apostle Paul says that in Romans 10, 17. So we're going to study the text, Acts chapter 3, verse 11 through 16. We're going to read how the Apostle Peter and the Apostle John have gospel conversations. So before we read, we're going to look at the context. What is going on? We read in chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, it was during the time of what? The time of Pentecost. The time of Pentecost. And it's a 40-day celebration. Celebration of what, Pastor? Of the Passover. Not only a celebration of the Passover, but it was a celebration of the anniversary of the Mosaic Law. And we read in Acts chapter 3, the apostle Peter and John, what were they doing? They were going to the temple to pray. They were going to the temple to witness to the diaspora Jews that, were, that came to Jerusalem to celebrate this Pentecostal day or month or days. They were there going to go to the temple to witness to these Jews, to their brothers. But as they were on their way to the temple, who do they encounter? They encounter a lame man. 
And this lame man, he didn't get into an accident that hurt his leg. No, this lame man was born lame. Because he was born lame to make a living, he had to do what? He had to beg. He had to beg for a living. So he sees the Apostle Peter and the Apostle John, and as he was begging, the Apostle Peter sees him. The Word of God says they gaze into this lame man. So instead of giving him money, what did they do? They share Jesus Christ is no, I don't have any silver, I don't have any gold, but I have something far greater, far better. What is that? Jesus Christ. And so they introduced, they had conversations with this man, they, they shared the gospel with this man. This man was healed. Luke recorded this man was able to stand, and what happened? He was singing praise, and everybody was able to witness it, and then they were amazed. And so all the Jews at the temple were amazed. Why? Because they saw this lame man who was born lame, who never walked before, walking for the first time, and they were all amazed. So, if you have your Bible, this is where we start. Acts chapter 3, verse 11. It says this, While he was clinging to Peter and John, he, the Luke, uh, is talking about the lame man. So the lame man was holding on to Peter and John. He wasn't holding on to them because he couldn't walk. Remember, he was able to walk. He was holding on to them because the crowd was overwhelmed. So he was kind of intimidated. He was kind of scared. So he was holding on to Peter and John. So all the people ran together to them at the so-called portico of Solomon. What? How did they feel? How did they react? The word of God says they were amazed. And when we think of the word amazed, it means they were astonished. They were in awe. So this man was holding on to Peter. Why? Because all these people were rushing on to see this man whom they know from birth. It's like, wow, is this, is this really happening? We know this man. We know his mom and dad. He was born lame. He was born crippled. So everybody was in awe. Everybody was amazed. But here's the thing. One thing we can learn about being amazed is that here's the myth about being amazed. Being amazed saves you. This emotional high saves you. Experiencing God's love saves you. Now, some of us know, can you recall going to Bible camps? You go to Bible camps for what? For that emotional high. We have these revivals in our church. Why? Because we want to experience God's love. Here's the thing. Experiencing God's love. Having this emotional high. Being amazed how, how awesome God is. Does not save you. Alright? That is a myth. That you know what? If I just go camp. If I just, you know, have that experience that I had when I was 16, 15 years old. You know, that feeling of just being in awe, being amazed by God, about who God is. No, you guys, I have, I'm, I've encountered many Christians who says, you know, I wish I can go back in time to when I was, you know, 15, 16, 17. I went to camp for the first time. It was so awesome. You know, people were just loving each other. We were singing songs of praise. People were crying. People were sharing testimony. People were just crying. It's like, wow, what an experience. And we get baptized. And then we come back home. The reality hits. Then we go back into our daily habits. And then what happened? We relapse. And we yearn for those moments. Why? Because we feel like, man, 
At that time, I was so on fire for God. I felt I was saved. I missed that. But here's the truth. Here's the truth. Being amazed does not save you. Being amazed does not save you. Having that emotional high does not save you. Experiencing God's love do not save you. So that's why we encounter many Christians, well, so-called Christians, who said, yeah, I was baptized. But then I lost it. So therefore, I want to get baptized again. No, you weren't saved because of your baptism. You weren't saved because you have that emotional high, that spiritual high. That is not salvation. See, in this moment, these individuals, they were gathering around the lame man and the apostle Peter and the apostle John, and they were full of amazement, full of awe. They weren't saved. And the Apostle Peter recognizes. And here in verse 12, it says what? But when Peter saw this, he replied to the people. What did he say? Men of Israel, why are you amazed at this man? Why do you gaze at us as if it by our own power or piety we have made him walk? Why are you guys so amazed? You guys know how who this person is? Yes. He was born into being lame, being crippled. Now God has healed him. He's able to stand. He's able to walk. Yes. Why are you guys amazed at this man? Why are you guys amazed at us? Here's the thing. The truth is this. Having a spiritual high you no, know, experiencing God's love does not save you. The spiritual high, experiencing God's love, these experiences, these things are just part of general revelations. These are just part of general revelations. What saves us is how we can hear the gospel is through the special revelation. What is the word of Jesus Christ? Faith comes from what? Hearing and hearing from the words of Jesus Christ. So why do God allow these experiences to happen? For instance, like brokenness. This man was broken. We you know we have we shared the three circles. The first step is with God's original designs. The second circle is what? Brokenness. Why? You know, people often ask me, why did God allow brokenness into our lives? Why did God allow people to experience brokenness? Why did God allow people to experience blessings? This man, he experienced brokenness. Why? Because he was born lame and this man experiencing blessing. How? Because he was able to walk again. Why? The reason why God allowed us to experience brokenness and blessing because why? It's for his glory. So for those of us who are going through a time of brokenness right now, God allow you to experience brokenness so that you can glorify God. God allow you to experience blessings so that you can bring God glory. God allow not only for you to bring Him glory, God allow us to experience brokenness so that in during our broken times, we can do what? We can seek Him. God allows us to experience blessings so that we can seek Him. Acts chapter 17, 27 says this, that they will seek God and perhaps they might grope for Him and find Him, though He is not far from each one of us. So, during this time of amazement, during this time of brokenness, during these times of blessings, these Jews that were surrounding 
this the surrounding Apostle Peter, Apostle John, and the lame man. They were curious. They were in awe. They were amazed. And so we read in verses uh, 12, Peter saw this. Peter saw this. And when Peter saw this, he had two options. One, he could do what? He could bring glory to himself. Or two, he can what? Have an opportunity for gospel conversations. I truly believe that. Everyone in this room, God allowed all of us in this room to experience brokenness, times of brokenness. God allows us to experience times of blessings for what? Opportunities to do what? To have gospel conversations. So you know a friend or a family member is going through some hardships. It's opportunity for what? Gospel conversations. This past weekend, well this past week, Sid and I, we visited a friend of ours in the hospital. He just had a kidney transplant. So we went there to pray for him, to encourage him. During that, I encouraged him, you know what, you are a Christian. I believe that God intentionally allowed you to experience these hardships of transplanting your kidney. He was able to provide you a kidney. Brokenness, at the same time, blessings, so that you could do what? You could tell about God's goodness. Amen. I believe a lot of us in this room experience hardship, brokenness. At the same time, a lot of us in this room experience times of blessings. Use those as opportunities to do what? To have gospel conversation. And Peter, in this moment, he says what? And Peter saw this, he replied to the people, Men of Israel, why are you amazed at this? Why do you gaze at us if it is by our own? Our pity, we have made him walk. In verses 13, he says this, The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant, Jesus, the one whom you delivered and disowned in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But you disown the holy and righteous one and ask for a murderer to be granted to you, but put to death the prince of life, the one whom God has raised from the dead, and a fact to which we are all witnesses. And on the basis of faith in his name, it is the name of Jesus which has strengthened this man whom you see and know, and the faith which comes to him has given the perfect help in the presence of all. So instead of taking this time to go Glorify themselves, what do they do? They say, guys, why are you guys looking at us that we say this man? We did it. We didn't, we didn't give power to this man. We didn't heal this man. It is through Jesus Christ. So it's an opportunity to have gospel conversations. So here's the myth when it comes to having gospel conversations. When we have gospel conversations, we don't talk about what? The church leaders. Don't talk about me. Don't talk about the staff here. Don't talk about the leaders here, the members here. Don't talk about the ministries. Don't talk about our courting years. Don't talk about our Tuesday life group. Those are good. The leaders are good. But that isn't what gospel conversation is all about. It is not about your testimony, how God has blessed you. So if you're going to have gospel conversation, you do what? You talk about who? You talk about Jesus Christ. Amen. So next time when we have gospel conversations, I encourage you, go beyond the church. Go beyond your testimonies. Talk about who? Talk about Jesus Christ. Isn't that what the Apostle Peter did? He says what in verse 13? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant, Jesus. The one whom you deliver and disown in the presence of Pilate, which he had decided to release. But you disown the holy and righteous one. Who is the holy and righteous one? He's talking about who? He's talking about Jesus. 
and ask for a murder to be granted you, but put to death the Prince of Life. Who is the Prince of Life? Is he talking about? He's talking about Jesus. The one who God has raised from the dead. Who did God raise from the dead? He's talking about who? Jesus. And it says this in verses 16. And the base of his, in, in his name, in his name of who? Jesus. So when you're out there having gospel conversations, you know, I thank you for talking about the church. Thank you about talking about our ministries here. Thank you for sharing your testimony. But that isn't gospel conversations. Gospel conversations it points to who? It points to Jesus Christ. You guys got that, church? It's time to have gospel conversations. We don't talk about, man, that last coin in there, that gift wrap, that you know, that servant at the school was awesome. When we talk about who? Talk about Jesus Christ. And then I like in verse 16. The Apostle Peter says what? And the basis of faith in his name, it is the name of Jesus. It is the name of Jesus. So here is the myth when it comes to the name of Jesus. We're here to talk about the name of Jesus. But this isn't what Luke is referring when he comes to talk about the name of Jesus. There is this myth that what? That Jesus' name has what? Power. That the name of Jesus is like some magical force. It's enchanting. It's like, now there's some Hollywood movies that says what? The power of Christ compels you, right? <laughs> During exorcism. People say the power of Christ compels you. It's the same like it's, it's some enchanted words. La like abracadabra. The name of Jesus it has no power. Why is that? Why is that? Well, because did you know that the name of Jesus is a common name? It is a common name. So instead of believing in the name of when we when we go have gospel conversations, when we are talking about Jesus, let's not talk about his name, but instead of what? Let's talk about the person of Jesus Christ. We're having gospel conversations. We're not trying to, you know, exercise anybody. It's like, the name of Jesus, the power of Christ compels you. We're not out there using enchanting, you know, phrases. Jesus is actually a common name during that time. So we're not there to use the name of Jesus Christ as an enchanting phrase. But actually we're there to believe in the person of Jesus Christ. We're there to have a gospel conversation about the persons of Jesus Christ. In Acts chapter 19, verse 13 through 15, there are some Jewish exorcisms. They exorcists, they were able to hear how the apostle Paul were able to cast out demons through the name of Jesus Christ. So Acts chapter 19, verse 13 says what? But also some of the Jewish exorcists who went from place to place attempted to name over those who had the evil spirits. And they were able to say what? The name of the Lord is saying what? I adjure you by Jesus whom the apostle Paul preaches. So basically they're going trying to cast out demons saying what? The, by the power of Christ compels you. Right? Like these Hollywood movies like to, you know, Make fun of. They were doing that. In verse 15, what did the evil spirits respond? What did they say? And the evil spirits answered and said to them, You know, I recognize Jesus, and I know about Paul, but who are you? See, saying the name of Jesus does not save you. Hear that, church? We can talk about Jesus, the name of Jesus, it does not save you. What saves you is what? You believe in the person of Jesus Christ. 
You know, Jesus, the Greek word for Jesus, what? Yeshu. Does that sound familiar? Yeshu. Yeah, that's where the Mongolian people got it. Yeshu. The Hebrew word for Jesus, what? Yeshua. Yeshua. Today, we get the name Joshua from Yeshua. So this is a common name. It's just a common name. The word Yahshua means what? Salvation. That's it. So there's a lot of people in the Bible. We, we read there's a lot of Joshua's. Jesus, you know, the name Joshua was a common name. Yeshua was a common name. Name does not give you power. It is the person of Jesus Christ. So when the apostle Peter, when he had gospel conversations, he didn't say, it is, uh, is the power of the name of Jesus Christ compels you. No, he was what? Having gospel conversation about the person of Jesus Christ. So let's read again. Verse 13. What did he say? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his what? Servant. Jesus. What is you? So when he said, God has glorified his servant, he is saying the person of Jesus Christ. And we read in scripture, in the Gospels, in the book of Philippians, Read that Jesus, when he was born, he, didn't, he wasn't born into a lavishing kingdom, in a throne. He was born into what? A crib. A place where they feed donkeys and animals. The book of Philippians, the apostle Paul talks about how Jesus, he emptied himself out. He, he had to pour himself out of his omnipotence, of his omniscience, his all-powerful, all-knowing, his, his godly attributes. He emptied those out. He was born into a servant. Where he, as a servant, he was Man, and as a man, he experienced what? Brokenness. He experienced hardship. He experienced temptations. He experienced what? Betrayal. He experienced death. That's what Peter says. He didn't talk about the name of Jesus. No, he talked about the person of Jesus Christ. That he was born as a servant. And it says what? The one whom you deliver and disown in the presence of Pilate, which he had decided to release. Read in the book of the Gospels, when the, when, when the Pharisees and the Jews brought Jesus to Pilate, they wanted Pilate to crucify Jesus. But Pilate wanted to release Jesus three times. He said, you know, this guy, he's a good guy. We should let him go. No, we want you to crucify him. Well, he hasn't committed no sin, no faults. No, we want you to crucify him. He says what? In verses 14. But you disown the holy and righteous one and ask for a murderer to be granted to you. So Pilate says, you know, let's, let's release this guy. How about what? Let's release him. They said, no, we'd rather you release uh, Barabbas. The murderer, instead of releasing Jesus. The Jews, they disown Jesus. So Peter, we had God's conversation. He talked about not the, the power of the name of Jesus, but he talked about what? The person of who Jesus is. And Jesus, he was a servant. In verse 14, Peter says what? But you disown what? The holy and righteous one. What kind of person was Jesus? Not only was he a servant, 
But he was a holy servant, holy one. He was a righteous one. Holy one has no sin. Righteous one, he was, he was able to be obedient to the laws of Moses. 613 laws. He was, be, he was able to be obedient. He did not fall into sin at all. So when you have gospel conversations, you talk about Jesus. You know what? He is just as human as you and I. He experienced brokenness just like you and I. He experienced death like you and I. But his death, he paid for our sins. What kind of person was Jesus? He was a holy one. He has never committed a sin. He was able to obey all of God's law. Unlike you and I, we break God's law every day. Like, like you and I, we break God's law every second. He was holy and righteous. In verse 15, Paul Peter says what? But put to death the prince of life. The one whom God has raised from the dead, a fact to which we are witnesses. What kind of person did the apostle Peter talk about? What kind of person of Jesus? The prince of life. He was a servant. He was a holy and righteous one. What kind of person was Jesus? He is what? The prince of life. Yes, he died. But he didn't stay dead. Amen to that. On the third day, what happened? God resurrected Jesus Christ. Amen to that, church? So when we have gospel conversations, we're not here to talk about how great the church is, how cool the community here is. We're not here to talk about the ministries here. We're not talking about how, how my personal test was known. We're here to talk about who? Person. Jesus Christ. That is having gospel conversations. So here's the application, church. Believers are called to have gospel conversations. Believers are called to have gospel conversations. What is gospel conversations? When we communicate the good news, when we converse and talk. But here's the thing. We, when we converse and talk, we're not here talking about pastors, missionaries, and church leaders. We're not here talking about our ministries. We're not here talking about our personal testimonies. We're here to talk about the person of Jesus Christ. Amen? And who is responsible of having gospel conversation? Here's the minute. It's not just pastors. It's not only the pastors. It's not only missionaries. It's not only church leaders. No, we let the leaders of the church do the gospel conversation. Since I am not a leader, I don't have to do gospel conversation. That is a lie. When we talk about who is responsible of having gospel conversation, the truth is this. All believers are called to have gospel conversations. It's not just the pastors, and it's not the church leaders. It's everyone. If you are a believer, you said, I follow Jesus Christ, you are responsible of having gospel conversation. Why? Because in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20, the apostle Paul says what? Therefore, we are ambassadors for Jesus Christ. He didn't say, no, just I am the ambassador of Jesus Christ. He didn't say that, no, me and Timothy are the ambassador of Jesus Christ. He didn't say, you know, no, Peter and John are the ambassador of Jesus Christ. No, he is saying what? We. Amen to that, church? Since we are ambassadors of Jesus Christ, we are called to do what? Have gospel conversations. So how do I have gospel conversations? I encourage you guys. Next time when you have gospel conversations, yeah, great, you can talk about the church. You can share your testimonies, and you can share about who your leaders are. But that's not gospel conversations. Okay? When you have gospel conversations, 
You're not talking about the church. You're not talking about the testimonies. You're not talking about your leaders. If you want to have gospel conversation, you talk about who? You talk about the person, Jesus Christ. Amen to that church? That is having gospel conversation. Conversing to one another. This is Jesus Christ. He is a servant. As in, he was born into a man. And as a man, he experienced suffering. Do you experience suffering? Yeah? Okay, guess what? Jesus experienced suffering too. Guess what? As a man, you will die, right? Okay, guess what? Jesus died. But, unlike you and I, we die because we are guilty. We die because we are sinners. But Jesus, he was a holy and righteous man. He didn't have to die. Jesus didn't have to die. Why did he die? Well, because he, God loves you, amen. He took on your death. He was that substitution, atonement for you and I. Because he died as a righteous man, God was able to glorify Jesus. How did God glorify Jesus? God raised him from the dead. Amen to that, church? That is gospel conversation. That is gospel conversation. So here's my challenge, church. When we have gospel conversations, this is my challenge. I challenge you to do what? Meditate the word. Here's the thing. You can't have a gospel conversation unless you know what? The word of Jesus Christ, right? You can't have gospel conversation unless you know about the story of Jesus Christ. That's what the good news is. That's what the gospel is, right? The story of Jesus Christ. That's why we have to read the Bible. That's why every Tuesday we encourage everyone to come to church so that we can study the Bible together so that you can be equipped so that when you do have gospel conversations, you don't talk about your church, you don't talk about your leaders, you don't talk about your, your personal testimony, how you got sick and then God healed you. Or how you were, you know, you were... You were in debt and then God help you with finances. No, those are good things, but that isn't gospel conversations. Gospel conversations is when you talk about the person of Jesus Christ. Amen. That is gospel conversations. So to know the person of Jesus Christ, you gotta know his word. Salvation comes from what? Hearing and hearing from what? The word of Jesus Christ. So we encourage you to come to church on Tuesday so that we can study the Word. We have a Bible quizzing. Yeah, it's a game, but it challenges you to do what? Study the Word. Read your Word. Read the Bible. You can't have God's conversation if you don't read your Bible. You can't have God's conversation you can't share the Bible with those who you are having gospel conversation with. So meditate upon the word. I challenge you to do what? Pray for gospel opportunities. See? Peter and John, they were going to the temple to do what? To go and witness to the Jews there. But little they know God has a special plan for them. The plan to do what? To heal this lame man. God has some special plan for Apostle Peter and Apostle John. Because they were able to heal this lame man. Thousands and thousands of Jewish brothers were able to come into salvation. So pray for gospel opportunities, church. So if you're going through brokenness right now, you're going through pain, going through suffering, I challenge you to pray, you know, God, whatever brokenness I'm going through, let me glorify you through this pain, through this suffering. 
How can I glorify you? Let me share of how good you are. Amen. Use your brokenness as an opportunity to do what? To have gospel conversations. Amen to that church. So then, how do we have uh, blessings? How do we know we are blessed? How do we know we have praises? You can't have praises unless you have what? Prayers. Right? That's why when we have praises, we share about what? How good God is. Now I pray that use that as an opportunity to do what? Have gospel conversation. We're called to do what? Preach the word. Communicate the word. Proclaim the word. God didn't equip you, the church, we didn't equip you so that you can keep it to yourself. No, salvation comes from what? Hearing. How are they going to hear if you don't share it? We are called to communicate the word. It's through the word of God that we are able to hear the good news. Preach the word. Share the word. Proclaim the word of God. This is Jesus Christ. He is a servant. He is a holy and righteous man. And he is the prince of life. Amen to that? Proclaim the word. Yeah, I challenge you this. Every Tuesday, what did we do? Have gospel conversation. And then what's next? Gospel invitations. Why do we have gospel invitation? Why? Because discipleship is important. We have gospel invitations because after this person has been born again, you need to do what? You need to nurture them. You need to feed them. It's like for those, we have a few families here who are in the process of having a baby, after you have a baby, what do you do? You nurture him or her, right? You feed him or her. You take care of him or her. So after those who are born again, what do we do? We feed him or her. We nurture him or her. We take care of him or her. Probably wondering, what's your excuse of not having God's promises? Well, I'm scared. I don't know how to. I might say it wrong. Here's the thing. That's why we come to church. So that we can be equipped and empowered. Amen. There is no excuse for not having gospel conversations. If you don't know how, talk to me. I'll teach you. You don't have an opportunity, come to me. I'll give you the, the, the opportunity to have a gospel conversation. I will empower you. There is no excuse of not having gospel conversations. One of my favorite quotes is from Chuck Lee. He says what? Say something. God may save someone. Say something. God may save someone. Church, this week, I challenge you guys. Go have gospel conversation. Your friends, families, communities. Amen? Let's pray.